Hello, hello, Alex aqui. Então, antes de começar esse episódio, eu quero dar algumas atualizações sobre o inglês de Necru. Em 2020, nós vamos ter 12 challenges diferentes, ou seja, é um novo produto completamente diferente para vocês. A cada mês, a gente vai ter um challenge diferente um do outro, claro. Então, por exemplo, nós teremos challenges sobre como melhorar o seu vocabulário, como fazer good first impressions, como ter o inglês melhor e mais natural possível durante conversas com nativos de inglês. Eu estou muito animada e quero muito, muito, muito que você participe. Então, se você gosta de nós, se você gosta do nosso trabalho, se você gosta aqui do Inglês de Micro Rádio e quer ficar de uma vez por todas sério com o seu inglês, começando agora em 2020, vá lá no nosso site, inglêsdenicru.com. Now, on with the show! Bom, agora eu vou dar um recadinho sobre o nosso querido Cambly. O Cambly continua sendo nosso parceiro e você pode aproveitar e acessar o Cambly.com ou o aplicativo do Cambly. Vai ter professor disponível 24 horas por dia, todos os dias da semana. Então, se você estiver interessado em falar com algum professor da Irlanda, que aliás está virando um dos meus sotaques preferidos do mundo... Gente, o sotaque irlandês é o máximo, né? Quem dera eu poder entrar lá no Cambly e achar um professor ou uma professora irlandês e irlandesa seria o máximo conversar e descobrir um pouco mais sobre a cultura. Então, se você tá afim de fazer isso, assim como eu, vá lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly e coloca o nosso código inglês no Podcast. Dessa forma, você pode testar a plataforma de forma gratuita e ainda aproveitar todos os pacotes que eles têm, você pode fazer de acordo com a sua necessidade. Então, por exemplo, ah, só tenho 15 minutos por dia. Tem lá pacote para isso. Só posso uma vez por semana, mas todas as semanas também tem isso. Posso três vezes por semana, meia hora por aula. Também tem. Então, você faz de acordo com a sua necessidade e o quanto você pode pagar. Claro, né? Então, é isso. Já dei meu recado, hein? Não se esqueçam de colocar o nosso código inglês no Cru Podcast lá em minutos grátis. É isso. Now, on with the show. Hello, hello, hey guys, and welcome to another episode of English no Kruhaju. Again, I am here with the one, the only, Felipe. Felipe, what's up? How are you doing? Hey, Ren, I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. So this is part two of our conversation about online learning, online courses, online education, that kind of thing. So in the last episode, Felipe kind of gave his backstory with uh, your background in learning things online. And now we kind of wanted to transition to how that's changed now that everyone's essentially living and working from home and online education is much more important. Does that sound cool to you? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Felipe, since you have been quarantined, How long have you been quarantined, more or less, now? I think it's been, oh, I don't even know, probably eight, ten weeks. <laughs> I've lost all track of time. Um, okay, have you been taking any online courses or learning new skills online during this crazy time? Okay, first I thought, okay, I have a lot of time, so I can learn a lot of things, and that pressure was a little bit overwhelming. So I thought, okay, I have to choose two, two or three things that I want to learn. And now I think I'm learning German as always on and off <laughs> and uh, a little bit of coding, like some very personal, very small projects. Awesome. And naturally you're learning a lot of stuff with the work that you do with us. That's always a constant learning process. Cool. So from my end, I would say first I downloaded essentially every fitness app in the app store <laughs> and I learned more or less zero from all of them. And actually, the most important thing I learned is it does not matter how good a fitness app is. If you are still just like kind of a lazy, chubby person, 
<laughs> it doesn't matter if you have a world class fitness app. And actually, the most effectness, effective fitness app for me was just an audio program that would run with me. So when I'm running, there's a person like in some music that's like, come on, keep like one foot after the other, like run proud, run strong, just like a motivational voice. So the only thing I've learned is less is more <laughs> for me personally. That's a great lesson. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, hmm, you said you got a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of information I think this is really common for most people. How do you deal with that? Or like personally, what have you done to combat that? Mm, okay. That's not only now. So it's been happening since I discovered the internet mainly because I see something <laughs> cool and I want to learn. Uh, what I try to do is I try to think about the end of the year. If I look back, I can either be well, not bad at coding, not bad at German, not bad at gardening, not bad at meditation, or it can be really good at one or two things. And then I try to choose and try to plan for the next years too. So for example, this, re this year, I really wanted to learn German and photography, for example, that was my plan, photography and videography. But since I can't really leave the house right now, it becomes a little bit hard, right? Because <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> You're just taking selfies of yourself <laughs> yeah. one day for a year. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I could still keep watching videos about photography or even videography, but that's, that's not fun. And we were talking about that earlier today. So I changed. Okay, German, I can still learn. I can still talk to people online. And what else can I learn? So I picked um, coding. And there is still a lot of other things I want to learn. But just I have to choose, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you a few questions about coding. Because this is an area of interest for me. And I've always imagined at some point in my life, I would like take a year off and learn how to code and maybe do like some coding boot camps and work at a startup for a year just to have that skill set because I spend most of my day on the computer and I'm creating things digitally. It would be very useful to learn how to code. I think... What's your take on that? Would you recommend someone like me learning how to code? Or would you just say that's too big of a project and there are a lot of awesome tools online to help you create content? I think it depends on your personality because... Yeah. Well, you, you know me, so <laughs> you can use me as an example. Okay, so I think to be a really, a great developer you really need to like spending time alone because you need to get in the flow you know coding for i don't know four or six eight hours because everything has to make sense together and for me personally i don't like that so when i try when i'm taking this coding courses i try to see like what i think i'm trying to get some perspective of all the things that I can't build and they mm -hmm. can put the pieces together. So I'm not going to be a great coder, but I know exactly what language I should use and what framework I should use for each project. For example, I don't have to be a great coder to create a frequency dictionary and that can benefit me learning German, can benefit us with a lot of frequency dictionaries for our business. And I can find something pretty much ready online and I just have to tweak it a little bit and learn on top of that. So my recommendation is you really have to love building something that's going to take time because people, they watch movies, they watch TV shows and they think they're going to just like launch a startup. But it takes time. It takes a lot of time if you want to code everything from zero. Yeah, you can also say from scratch. From scratch. There you go. Yeah. 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 I think the smart answer for me would be I definitely do not need to learn how to code. 
I do enjoy spending long periods of time by myself, but you mentioned something that really stuck out to me. If you said something about you have to be in the flow, and I imagine you are referring to like actual flow states, like a lot of people online and entrepreneurs talk about this idea of being in a flow state, which essentially is like you don't notice time passing, like you're very engaged, you're very motivated, and all of your energy is focused into an activity that feels good and makes you feel alive. Yep. Is that correct? That's what you're yep. referring to? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. I love the idea of flow. So how do you see this idea of flow and what are some activities that give you that feeling? Mm, I think for me personally, I like to see a little bit of accomplish by the end of the day. So with coding, sometimes it takes, I don't know, maybe 20 hours, 40 hours to build a page, right? And it's not even working yet. It's just a part of something bigger. And then it, it's something that I could learn and I think I should learn, especially, for example, with SEO, I've been talking about it. Sometimes you have to work a few days, even a few weeks to see some results. But for me, I think if I'm working on something, let's say an email sequence or an automation or a dashboard or something that I'll see a final product in a, let's say, a short period of time, I think it got into flow pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So for you, being in a flow state has to do with not only the activity that you're doing, but also your expected outcome? Yep, yep. Okay, cool. Do you have any like non-work-related kind of flow activities? I had the work example. That I... <laughs> uh, uh, no work, okay. So I can I give you a non-work example okay. if you want. You give me you give me one first, okay. Okay, so something I like talking about currently is the banjo. Surprise, Foster's learning how to play the banjo again. <laughs> um, no, but playing music for me, and I kind of noticed this the other day. You said whenever I have an instrument, like I look happier and I my eyes kind of light up. And that's because when I'm, playing an instrument it is like a challenge where you know i start trying to learn something it's really hard at the beginning and it gets easier and easier but i think that does put me in some sort of a flow state in the sense that i don't have to think about other stuff when i'm doing that like when i'm doing a lot of activities i will want to listen to a podcast or music in the background or i get distracted but i can sit down with an instrument for like two hours and just try to learn a song and that's it. That's the only thing I'm concentrated on and it doesn't feel like effort. Like it doesn't feel like, I mean, it's hard, but it's not like a pain in the ass, you know? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's kind of the same, if we're talking about the same idea of flow, but I think we are. No, I think we are. Yeah. Do you have anything like that in, in your life? Yeah, I was trying to come up with an example, but everything is computer related. And if it's on my computer, I can somehow tweak it and make it into work or a personal project. But when I think about something that's not digital, uh, I think longboarding for me is just like instruments for you. But it's a different reason, though. So I... Okay. First, I do you want to explain what long, longboarding <laughs> is? Yeah, it's just like it's skateboard, but longer. And you normally don't do a lot of tricks. You just go downhill normally doing yeah. like slides. And it's it, it's supposed to be safer than skateboarding. <laughs> Still looks <laughs> incredibly <laughs> unsafe. Yeah. And so I think so when I was a kid, I used to skateboard all the time. That was my go to activity activity. And after it was as I was growing older, I thought that was super dangerous, so I swept it and switched to yeah. longboarding, which is it can be safer if you have proper equipment. It can be safer. So you're wearing a wearing a helmet. Yep, everything. Knee pads. 
Mm -hmm. And hand pads. So if you yeah. fall, you can actually, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, I just see kids on longboards, it's like in my hometown, and they're just going down really big hills with no equipment. And I'm like, nah. Are you crazy kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, you need the equipment. But when you're going equipment, down, equipment, equipment, equipment is always singular in English. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Alexia always makes that mistake too. I remember when she was working at Puerto dos Fundos, she'd always say, "I'm getting some equipment for the set today," and I would always have to say equipment. So yeah, Alexia okay. and Felipe, it's just equipment. Equipment. Okay. So when you're going down, when you're going downhill. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's not like, it's not that I'm enjoying so much that I can't think about anything else. It's that instead you're just like so focused on not falling and like, what can I do next? What can I do next? Because you're gaining velocity when you're going down. Yeah, you can say that or you're just going faster. Yeah. And then you have to think about it constantly. So I remember when I had my first girlfriend and we broke up eventually. I used to go there so I would forget about the breakup. And it's not, again, it's not about like I love it so much that I wouldn't think about anything else. It's just like if I think about the breakup, I'm going to fall and I'm going to hurt myself. You know, it's a different reason, but I, I think that's flow too. I think that's a great point and I've never really thought about it like this, but flow and focus are definitely interconnected. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if I'm playing the banjo or guitar, I can, like, play around or something. But if I'm learning a new, like, picking pattern and I'm learning a new drill, like, if I'm on the banjo just going, like, da 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 mm -hmm. da da and I'm learning a new way to move my fingers, if I think about something else, I immediately start messing it up. And I'm like, da 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 <laughs> So when I have to focus 100% on that, and if I get out of that flow, I mess it up. So I have to go back in. So yeah. it's like 100% of my focus on that is on that task at hand. And if I take it off and I start thinking about like, eh, I have a lot to do today. Like hmm, I suffer <laughs> from a lot of social anxiety. <laughs> you know, if those <laughs> things start coming up, then it stops working. So yeah, that's, that's a good way to think about it. I've never really thought about it like that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, cool. Do you have any other? <laughs> I don't remember how we got on the topic of flow states, but do you have any other comments or observations about that? Mm, no, I think that's it. I think it's something that there are a lot. There is a lot of research about, and it's very hard to define. But it's really good when you think you have it, or you are in the flow. I think it's a good feeling. After you leave, you're like, oh, that was good. It was like three hours of doing something without thinking about my my problems or something bad. Yeah. And there is a lot of science behind, like, uh, you have these different brain wave states. And for me, that's not as important. Like you said, like, if you're kind of in the flow, you feel it. You feel good. And it doesn't matter if you're being super productive. You're just like, ah, that was a good productive activity for me i don't know if it if it's like that for you too but if even if it's computer related or not computer related after a few hours i feel completely exhausted and i feel good about it because it, it feels like i did something for a long longer period of time more intensely yeah i think it's similar just to like after you go to the gym or exercise mm -hmm. And your body's tired, but you feel good. Like, mm -hmm. ah, I know I'm going to, I don't know, lose weight or be stronger. So you know that's going to be a beneficial thing for you in the long run. Feels really good. Cool. Can I think you that's hear a, this? I can hear that. <laughs> this is the first time I'm here. This is my third week. This is the first time I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have construction on Flippy's end. So I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> but we might jump in at some point at a later time and continue. Okay. All right. Thanks, Felipe. We will Thank end you. this part here. Maybe get back with some more online education talk soon. And we'll talk to you. Either me, Felipe, or Alexia. One of us will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. 
Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do nosso Inglês de Necro Rádio. E eu queria falar que a cada mês nós temos um challenge novo. E onde é que você pode achar esse challenge? Vá lá no inglêsdenecro.com. Aproveita e dá uma espiada em tudo que a gente está fazendo e de produtos novos, de preços super acessíveis e até coisas grátis que temos para vocês. Claro que quando a gente pensa em algum produto, a gente pensa em todos os níveis de pessoas né, de inglês que a gente pode oferecer e alcançar. Então, se você é básico, intermediário ou avançado, pode fazer. Nós aqui abrimos as, os braços para todos, todos nós, né, porque eu me incluo nessa, e acolhemos todo mundo. Então é isso, vá lá no inglêsdenecru.com, aproveite e fique sabendo um pouquinho mais sobre a gente, tá bom? Te vejo no próximo episódio, hein? Bye!